while his thirst skill does way more damage. In between their attacks and deflections, the player shapes Jala's personality and backstory through choices, which build up her persona. Just when Jala thinks she's getting through to Sergio, he pulls her into his inner world, a psychic landscape where he's the man he imagines himself to be in reality. What the hell? I can't make a dent! Sergio's ego makes him invulnerable to attack. What's a girl to do? Like most South Asian men, all it takes to destroy Sergio's ego is a single word from his mom. Jala summons the next best thing to help her win this psychodrama battle. Her mom. Ah, ah, ah. Trouble! No! Jala hits Sergio with a rage taunt, which brings all of Sergio's buried resentments to the surface. Once this weakness is exposed, we hit him with a rage skill. The battle ends not with a defeat, but a reconciliation. They've worked through their issues during the battle and can now start again. I'm sorry I came on so strong, Jala. As friends, or maybe even something more. When Jala needs to clear her head, she heads out to the abandoned theme park just outside of town to go skating. These days it's run by the bear mascot Soundy and his creepy cult of skater punk kids. Our approach to skating is to make it accessible, not too punishing, but also add enough depth for folks that really want to get into it. The basics are to keep the combo meter going up for high score. Extend the combos on rails, wall runs, manuals, quick turns, and end on a combo finisher for a big score. These are just some of the stories and mechanics packed into Thirsty Suitors. We have so much more to share with our players. We can't wait for you to join Jala as she confronts her mistakes, makes up with her exes, reconciles her cultural differences, and becomes the person she was meant to be. Thirsty Suitors is coming to Steam, PlayStation, Switch, and launching into Game Pass. Experience the game for yourself with a Thirsty Suitors Steam demo. Out now. It's hard not to think about how time has changed the memory of you. How it will continue to change, to shift, until I'm left with a version I've created in my head. I'm packing things up, clearing out your stuff, sorting through memories that twist and turn depending on the way you look at them. It's hard not to drift into the past. To remember everything all at once. Back when you were still here, Our studio is called Cardboard Computer, and um, it's just it's just three of us. So my name's Jake Elliott. I'm the writer uh, in the studio, I guess, in the team, and, and I also do a lot of programming. Uh, Tomas and I kind of share programming. It's like art, writing, sound. I was playing music and some touring and making records. I guess I caught Jake in his last year. We were at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. All three of us were living in Chicago around 2010, I think. Tomas and I wanted to make a video game, and we had a few other ideas before we settled on Kentucky Ride Zero. We brought Ben on for the second act, I yes. think, and that was in the spring of that same year because we were somehow managed to release the second act in a few months.
It would be Friday night, and we'd be like, okay, I bet if we worked all night tonight, I bet we could publish this game tomorrow morning. And we were like, okay. We would work all night, and it wouldn't be quite done. We'd be like, okay, but I bet we could do Sunday. I bet if we kept going, you know? And um, it didn't end up being possible, so <laughs> we had to adjust our expectations a little bit. Seven years, with like another three years before that. Learned a lot about our own processes, and I think that's still kind of carrying over into the new project. Right after Kersey came out, I think we moved directly into this new game. But the idea has been kicking around for years. Maybe as old as Kersey. We're working on a new project. It's the first project we're really seriously focusing on performance as like kind of a core part of the piece. KRZ, it's like very still, there's not a lot of animation. Everything is sort of like these slow idle tableaus. So we're sort of doing a lot of R&D with making it more lively. This is a version of like fully animated characters that we can do as a three-person team, basically. This workflow is already just so exciting. This time we have a lot more knowledge going into it. The beginning of Kentucky Route Zero it was a more staggered sort of development. And now we've known each other for so long and we're so comfortable with each other. And I think that informs making the new work in a way that feels substantial and exciting. The new game, it's, it's about a different tempo. It's faster and, and, and hopefully funnier. And mm, there's comedy in KRZ. But it's a tragedy. But it's a tragedy. It's not a tragic comedy, though. No. no. It's just a tragedy, yeah. Yeah, just a tragedy. <laughs>
get A Link to the Past from my dad or even Wind Waker later from my mom. Just getting those games as a kid is what motivates me now uh, to want to make an experience just like that. Hey, it's been a little while, and I just wanted to reassure everyone that no, you did not collectively hallucinate our announcement of Outer Wilds for the Nintendo Switch. It's possible we were a bit over-optimistic on the time frame. At this point, it's possible we just fundamentally misunderstand the Gregorian calendar, but it's still happening, and we're working hard to bring a great version of Outer Wilds to the Switch. Thank you for your patience. We'll have new info for you as soon as possible. With that said, we also have some good news. <sighs> For a long time, I didn't even know that I wanted to make games. And I always loved writing stories in school and learning about the mechanics in video games. At some point, I just thought, okay, maybe I can combine those two things. I'm a computer kid. <laughs> I liked working in these creative programs, and, and those were the first steps of kind of like expressing myself. My name is Kai, and I'm a writer and one of the co-founders of Third Shift. I'm Fabian, I'm the artist and one of the co-founders of Third Shift. Right now we are in the west of Germany, um, in my apartment, which is at the same time the headquarters of our little company. When we started thinking about our project, we did a lot of brainstorming actually on, on this uh, balcony here. And uh, this was when the idea was born. Forever Go is a story-driven road trip adventure game where you play as Alfred, an elderly man who embarks on a journey in his trusty van. The story is inspired by a 
trip I took down the Pacific coast. Fabian and I were always interested in the diverse landscapes in North America, and that's where a lot of the inspiration came from. When Kai was about to go on this road trip, he asked me to uh, lend him my camera. After he came back, he shared that book with me like as a thank you. And this was actually taken in the middle of nowhere. You can drive for hours on end, and there's just no one. And this was just uh, crazy to see. Yeah, we have a scene just like this in the game. Alfred was the first thing we had. Character model of Alfred didn't always look like this. This is what Alfred used to look like. We started redesigning Alfred and making him a little bit more lifelike. Alfred's main purpose is to document this trip. Usually the games that stuck most with us are story-driven games. I'm just excited to see when people actually play this thing in the future. And I hope this will be very soon. Making games is a process. You try and guide it, but you're trying to guide like a gushing river. Often people reach for stories they've already heard. We really want to pull from our own experience as much as possible because it feels the most kind of real. I'm Laura, uh, I'm the director at Dreamfield. This is the Hellfire Club. Way back when Dreamfield started, this is one of the first places we came for like research. Ireland is full of ruins and those ruins speak to a history of violence sometimes, a history of change as well. 
Greenfield started as a label for my own work, and then I met Leah. It was just gonna be a few sessions, but it turned into like a full-time week just exploring. We developed loads of ideas, and one of them uh, became If Found. Suddenly there was a dynamic. We're like playing off each other, and then as more and more people come in, it kind of like grows its own identity. I think like creativity is when you bring like one like random idea from here and one random idea from somewhere else and like see how they could join or like what they could do together. And when you have lots of team members, that just happens. It's really important to me that we have the energy and we enjoy it when we come here. So like today, instead of showing computer screens, I wanted to show like Dreamfield is like all of these people coming together. The new game is set in kind of like a fantasy version of Ireland. Probably the most obvious first detail is that all the characters are cats. I think art-wise we have something very unique. We have themes that I think are very relevant these days about coming together in the face of adversity. Everything drowned will someday rise from the deep. The eerie message and theme of our game. <laughs> and lots of cute cats. The goal is to be creative together and make something that is worthwhile. Well, I think what's fantastic about Dreamfield is that um, whether you're working on the music or the art or the programming, you're really invited to like bring your best to the table. Everyone kind of leaves a mark on it, which is really nice. In a lot of ways, I think Dreamfield has become more polished as we've gone on. I think this game will feel more polished even compared to Fend, but I hope that we still bring that edge of like exploration and adventure <laughs> into it. Thank you so much for tuning in to our second annual Annapurna Interactive Showcase. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all again next summer.